In 300 years from today, will what you do really matter? It's a question that we ask our people in our community all the time. And it's a question that we ask to calm them, their nerves, their fear, their, their anxiety. Because most of the time, the answer to that question is no, it's not gonna matter. Except last night, Leah, I have an amazing business partner who lives, out of, lives in Brisbane, and she asked me that same question. What are you so worried about, Naz? Is it really going to matter in 300 years time? This speech, right now, what I'm doing, is it gonna matter? And without even thinking about it, or seemingly not thinking about it, my answer was yes. What I have to say today, it fucking matters. It matters to each and every one of us. You see, today, together, we have been creating something incredible, something amazing, something beyond what each one of us can even consider. There is something within each of us. We heard about the lion. I would like to think of it as a lion. <laughs> the speeches that you've heard today they've been feeding your soul they've been inspiring you they've been moving you and they've been changing you and so as you walk out of the room today I would really love you to consider how is that going to change the trajectory of what we are doing together as a community of incredible humans and um, you can tell, like, this is fucking important to me, but I'm about to tell you. By the way, Amanda, I don't know what school of um, the coaching room you went to, but kind and nice. Yeah. I have never met those two gentlemen in this <laughs> coaching room. They're imposters. You might have seen me at the beginning of their, their path. <laughs> it, it must have been, because the, the men that I met were definitely... Kind of nice, uh uh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> to ruin your rent. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's, there's something, you know, we heard this morning a lot of you said the reason I come here is because I love the energy of the room. I love what goes on here. And that is, that in itself is a specialness of what happens here. So, let's get on to the talk. That's just the prelude. Wow. <laughs> So, theft is a feminine. Why is it that after almost 300 years, I don't know what this theme with 300 years is, but anyway, apparently it's about 300 years. So why is it that after 300 years, the feminist movement is still not being effective? We still, we heard from Jay this morning, 7% across the top 500 companies are represented by women. Why is that? Right now, in Australia, this is our federal government. We have a 26% rep representation by women. But I'm not here to talk to you about inequality. Because I think there's something far more sinister, far more grave than inequality in gender and I'm not here to talk about gender. This is what I believe we're actually currently facing. A couple of weeks ago, I was at a speech, uh, at a day, um, run by the Wake Up Project here in Sydney, and Tara Moss, a very famous feminist, got up and presented those figures about the politics. This is what I believe is actually represented in our politics. And so, I'll get to what it actually represents in one moment. But I had a profound realisation in this very room about two years ago. I'm not really sure if it really was two years, I just really made that up because I have no idea about time anymore because Jay totally took, no, actually it was Marina, it's all your fault Marina, totally took my concept of time away. But I was sitting in this chair right here and I had a very profound moment which seemed like nothing. 
and it changed the way that I viewed the world and it changed the way that I actually interact with the world. And the way that I view the world is like this. And so we don't have an inequality crisis in our country, in our world. We are at the brink of an energy crisis. Because I believe that the energy that we're bringing to our organisations, both men and women, is we're bringing so much of that masculine energy that Jay spoke about this morning. And very little of our feminine energy ever gets to shine. And not only is this happening within society, the only way for it to actually be that way is because it's happening within each and every one of you. But what chance do we have in the society that we've been brought up in? Just making sure. <laughs> so, this energy thing that Jay's been talking about today and that I realized when I was sitting over here, it's actually not provable by science yet. And I don't really, I'm not really surprised by that considering science is a very masculine way of being. So we don't have proof that it actually exists. But where we do have proof is we have very ancient traditions. We've got the yin and the yang of the Chinese. We've got the uh, Hora Horas, Horas and Ra from uh, ancient Egypt. We have Adam and Eve in Christianity. And everywhere you start to look, when you think about feminine and masculine energy, it's got nothing to do with gender, you will start to see it once you understand it. And this is not just my opinion, it's also in biology, even though there's scientists, sorry for the scientists in the room, Claire. We also have the left brain and the right brain. So we've been told that the left brain is very logical, the right brain is very creative. So it's kind of a bit sneaky trying to turn on your feminine brain by asking you to breathe through your left nostril. It's just the way that it works. And so I said, it's so hard for us in the society that we're brought up in to actually tap into this feminine energy. For me, oh, so cute. <laughs> Go curly heads. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> I straighten it every morning. <gasps> oh, such terrible, inauthentic way of being. <laughs> I will not be guilted into thinking that this is wrong. Anyway, this is me. I didn't really have much hope of having a feminine energy left in me by the time I'd reached adulthood. I grew up as any, what I believed any normal Aussie kid did. I was the youngest girl of uh, two older brothers. No hope, I had no hope. But the, at the age of two, I already had my feminine energy coming on board. My mom tells a story that I used to get up every single morning, feminine's very nurturing, very caring. At the age of two, I'd already worked this out. That I'd get my brothers out of bed in the morning I always ask mum, where were you? Like, hello, I was a girl. Anyway, I get my brothers out of bed at the age of two and I would make them breakfast. So I would climb up, make their wheat bix, put the milk in and serve them up breakfast. <laughs> but that feminine way of being didn't really last too long in a household full of boys and a dad who was very, very masculine in his way of being. There was no Barbies for me. It was GI Joes. That's what I preferred. And we, uh, we played beat em up type of games with my brothers. My mum did try. She took me to one ballet class. It kind of wasn't my thing. And uh, instead, I ended up um, being a, the first Boy Scout in Queensland. Can you believe it? Oh. They actually called me a Boy Scout, too. <laughs> I, was, I was told that I was a tomboy. And by the time I'd re reached school, there was seriously no hope for my feminine energy. And I would suspect that this is true for you guys too. Our education system is set up in a masculine way. It's set up for achievement, for goal setting, for competition. 
I didn't once get asked to sit there and just be okay with being. Just to be me. Just to be with myself. But instead, I was encouraged to compete. I was encouraged to be the best. That was what seemed to be the thing that worked in the world. So I continued to do that. And even to the point that I got a certificate for being the best at scissor skills. <laughs> so where did that leave me? When I had grown up, become an adult, of course, what did I do? I joined the most masculine profession <laughs> that there is. I mean, <laughs> Like one, I'm young. I was such a baby, but like, I'm so proud of my gun. <laughs> <laughs> so this was on my attestation day. Um, so I would have been, I don't know, a baby, 19 or 20 there. So I can't remember. Anyway, so I joined the most masculine profession that we've probably got other than that probably army, maybe. Can't really think of any much more than that. Anyone else got anything more masculine than that? Mm -hmm. WWE? Yeah. W oh yeah, but I mean they even have, is that wrestling? Yeah, no they even have female wrestlers, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't into jelly wrestling or anything like that whilst in uniform. So. so I was a police officer here in Sydney for 12 years. And probably for that last two years and, and as I met, met Jay and Joseph and all the amazing community of the coaching room, my feminine energy probably um, didn't really know it was coming online, but it had started to come online. So I, I started to question my purpose and the things that I wanted to do in the world. And I signed up to the coaching room. I'd started to facilitate, um, now I look back, what I was actually doing was facilitating teams and groups and all that feminine goodness. It's happy to surrender. It's one of the hardest things I believe, going from masculine to feminine. Happy to go with the flow and it's a very supportive, active listener. So they're the differences, the general differences between these two. So, what does this look like? Um, two seconds. I tell you, I was only doing this last night. Yet, this speech actually came out of a very feminine way of being. And so I've been struggling actually to write it. I was in yoga one night, and all of a sudden I hear this voice saying, this voice, my lioness, saying to me, you need to talk about the theft of the feminine. I was like, I'm not talking about the theft of the feminine. That's not what I talk about. I talk about other things like community and businesses and purpose and I don't talk about feminine energy. I'm the most anti-feminist human being that you've ever met on this planet. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, I am. So it's a very feminine way of being. So feminine energy is the greatest untapped, underutilized natural resource we have. And the awesome news for you guys is you've got access to it right now. And the even more awesome news about that for us as women is we can access it so much faster and so much easier than men. And that's based in biology. So when a man has a thought, we know this, when a man has a thought, <laughs> <laughs> if a man has a thought, uh, what, what actually happens in his brain is it activates just the hemisphere in which that thought happens within. It only activates half like the hemisphere that it's in. With women, we have a much larger corpus callosum. Did I say yeah. it right? Yeah. I knew I did biology for a reason. So we have a much larger one of those. And what that means, I'm not doing it twice. Um, what that means for us is that when we have a thought, there's a whole bunch of nerve endings in there. And so what happens with the thought is it activates both sides of our brain at the same time. And so this is what they talk about intuition. Because we can feel and think 
about one situation at the same time. Which is great news for us because it means we have access to this feminine energy so much faster and so much quicker than men. Men have access to feminine energy, and that's why I want to be really clear, this talk is not about men and women. This is about feminine and masculine energy. And as women, what we can do is activate ours to really change the world. So, when I spoke earlier about femini fe feminism, the thing that I find really interesting about it is the feminist movement works in a way, in a very masculine way. And so we're fighting, don't like that word, the battle, don't like that one either, but we'll use it for the moment. We're fighting the battle in the wrong way. Because if we want to be able to change the world, we can do it today. We can do it right now. And we can choose to turn on our feminine energy. You may be sitting there going, well, that's really nice, but how the hell do I do that? I've lived my whole life in this masculine world and I don't know how to do it. Well, I had no idea either. And the moment sitting in this seat was actually Jay. And he said to me, I've got two little people. Uh, they're currently six and four. And he said to me, when you play like a ball game with them, what do you actually do? And I'm like, well, I win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing like soccer, cricket, you know, memory games, whatever it is. Like, I was that competitive that I wanted to beat the three-year-old. <laughs> and so Jay sent me home that day and he said, well, what if you interacted with your kids and had no reason, no purpose, and was just being in the presence of your children? What would that be like? And it was the most beautiful, amazing gift that Jay gave to me and that Jay gave to my children. Because it was the first time in their life that I actually connected with them. The very first time. And that's the power of feminine energy. There doesn't have to be a point. We don't have to set goals. We don't have to do any of those things because we are powerful beyond measure, as Yvette said, in just being. But we're brought up in this world to say that we have to be more than anything but being. It's ridiculous. So my journey from there was realizing for myself that I wasn't doing, I wasn't giving everything that I had to the world, even though I was doing an amazing job in the cops. And so I, I decided to resign and leave, and accidentally, no, there are no accidents, because this, this feminine energy, she's really powerful. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> and she just delivers. I'm like, this is awesome. You, like, I can have this, I, I honestly, most days, like, it's not true that I sit back and do nothing. But yeah, many days, it's a bit like that. So it's about um, setting intentions. So magically, we have this awesome community. We've got, I've got a whole bunch of, love you, amazing community of incredible people who are really out to change the world, who have kind of like, for me, in my masculine way of being, they just kind of appeared. They just kind of like showed up here. All of a sudden, this all happened and it's lovely. Um, so how do we access this? Um, B, stop having a point to anything. Um, the other thing is that I've found has been really helpful because you're probably still sitting there in your masculine mind, some of you going, well, yeah, and what do I actually do? Like, I want to know what I do. I don't want to just be. Um, meditation is very, very helpful. And um, yoga, as long as you don't want to be in front of the stage of a bunch of women talking about a topic that you don't really want to talk about, yoga is a really, really great way of accessing your feminine energy. And just, and just be. It's really, really powerful. Um, so yes, awesome things happen by doing nothing sometimes. <laughs> um, and then it gets a bit freaky if you start to tap in. I do warn you, it does get a little bit freaky when you tap into that stuff a little bit more than what you thought you had. 
you mm -hmm. start to speak to dead people, that's not nearly so great sometimes, especially when you speak to um, your ex-colleagues and the cops and tell them that you've been speaking to dead people. <laughs> <laughs> And they say, I think you might need to go and check yourself into the mental hospital. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I won't be doing that straight after this talk. But, um, <laughs> but there, are, there are really powerful ways of being. The reason I share that with you about the dead people stuff is because I thought I was a freak. And I thought I really did need to like, go and check myself into a mental hospital. But apparently it's just something really powerful about being a human that we can do these things. Either that or I've got a really good imagination. Either way, I'm good with both of them. So, so the feminine energy. So it's called the theft of the feminine. Oh, I did have a picture for you. See? So I've gone from like locking people up in like really tiny little cells to like <laughs> having people into my home and having great conversations. And I don't know what she's telling me, but she's I'm not turning on that feminine energy. So. So the title of this talk was The Theft of the Feminine. And the thing is, is the feminine hasn't really been stolen, but it's been oppressed over many hundreds of thousands of years. And the thing is, is we've suppressed it after having the oppression. But no longer will this repression by oppression be okay. No longer will we be wrong for being activating our female or our feminine energy. No longer will it be okay for us to be burnt at the stake for being mystical or magical. Now is your time to shine. Now is your time to activate that energy that already lives within you. And as you let your own feminine energy feverishly pulse throughout your system, you will unconsciously give yourselves sorry, unconsciously give others around you permission to do the same women and men so i say that it's time that we put down the feminist movement and we pick up the humanist movement because that is the thing that's really going to evolve us as a humanity and what he said was he they're facilitating evolution in us is what you said, something along those lines. And what the beautiful part is, and what I've been witness to over the past couple of years, how many years have you had to put up with me? About three. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, so about for the last three years is what I've witnessed in Jay and Joseph is you're facilitating an evolution in them. Mm -hmm. And so... Isn't that the truth? And so this is the power of the feminine. The reason... Little secret. The reason they like hanging out with us so much is because our feminine freaking rocks and they just love it and can't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs>